Hello everyone, Matt Wandry here with a message about our governor's most recent executive order. Uh, it's a 17 page document that speaks to how schools are to operate and function for the remainder of the 2019 school year and, and I know as you've all heard by now that uh, face to face instruction in the traditional setting um, essentially has ended uh, for the remainder of the year. Uh, additionally, the MHSAA announced today that uh, all spring sports seasons have been canceled as well. So life, life as we know it in the traditional school setting is, is very different and uh, uh, not unlike what's happening in our state and nation, uh, there are many accommodations that have to be made. So we've been working for several weeks on putting together an online learning platform uh, for well under 5,000 students and we've uh, successfully put together what we think is a great opportunity uh, for our children to continue to interact in an academic way uh, with our staff. And I want to share with you a little bit today uh, what that's going to look like. So first of all, my primary focus for this address is going to be on that online learning plan. And I know there are many, many questions about some other logistic concerns that you may have. And please know that answer, answers to those questions are, are coming. And so we'll, I'll speak to that a little bit at the end of uh, my presentation to you uh, this afternoon, but my primary purpose is to talk about what the next several weeks and months will look like academically for your children. So I think the overarching message, the governor's executive order is 17 pages. It's a robust document. There is a lot to digest in here. Uh, obviously, we don't expect our parents to go through uh, all of these, these items, but we have done that. And together with teachers, principals, some parent and student input, uh, we have built a really, really good plan that we think you're going to be very pleased with uh, that provides your children the opportunity uh, to continue to connect with, uh, with uh, our teachers. So our primary mission uh, as it relates to students is really uh, participation and engagement. So we have a number of ways we're going to try and connect with you to uh, make sure that uh, whether you have one child or multiple children in the home, that there's outreach between their teachers, the actual buildings, uh, and your individual children to figure out when their classes meet, what's expected of the students uh, individually, uh, per classroom, per grade level, per building, and you and your son or daughter will have the opportunity to engage directly with teachers uh, and what that looks like for you specifically. So obviously whether you're an elementary student, middle level, or high school student, uh, whether you're a current uh, in a face-to-face -face traditional setting or in our homeschool partnership or in the virtual setting, whether you're a general education student, special education student, we have accommodated uh, as best we can for all the needs of our individual students in this plan, which I think you'll be pleased with. So like I said, our primary mission as an education institution is to do what? It's to administer education. Teaching and learning is our business. And although this, uh, this crisis in our country has challenged us, it certainly hasn't uh, prevented us from putting our best foot forward to make sure that you know, in the coming weeks and months, we still have an obligation to educate our children in Lapeer. Um, I don't think any of us want to imagine a scenario where our students have no connection to school for let's say a five or six month uh, period of time that's not good for anyone not good for our staff who desires that connection with your children and certainly not good for um, your kids so the support that your kids require uh, is addressed um, in, in our plan and uh, so what's going to happen from a timeline perspective is uh, on april 6th that's this coming monday uh, we have outlined a pretty detailed staff expectation uh, plan for both elementary and the secondary levels and our teachers are going to uh, get a chance to talk with their building principals about this plan on Monday and make it better and refine it and uh, we would like to roll this out and begin the student engagement piece on April 14th which is the following Tuesday so it gives it giving our staff ample time to get geared up to prepare lessons and to feel comfortable in the online setting to begin a positive interaction uh, with your children. So that's the kind of the timeline. Uh, what are some of the questions? A lot of people have questions as it relates to access to technology. Uh, many of you helped uh, participate in the survey we sent out a few weeks ago about the readiness in your home 
to support online learning for children. And so we have a pretty good idea of what's out there, but we have a number of computers available to distribute to your home. Obviously, you'd sign that piece of equipment out and we'd ask you to return it, uh, but we will have a process uh, by which we uh, identify who needs computers, who has limited connection to the internet. We have plans for that as well. And building to building, we're gonna be able to address those individual concerns. We're, at, we're asking that our teachers uh, provide the necessary accommodations for your children um, in hopes that you have the option as a family to both maintain your current grade or content standard uh, where your children are at in particular grade levels uh, or subjects, or they can improve them. Right? So if you as a parent desire opportunities for your son or daughter or your children to uh, access the education in a more rigorous way, we are asking that our teachers provide those accommodations for you. So again, like any normal parent-teacher, uh, student-teacher relationship, it's really going to be about communication. So you're going to have the opportunity via email, telephone call, video conferencing, to interact with your children's teachers as, they, as your children will as well, to request of them things that you think your son or daughter might need. Obviously, we're very limited face-to-face -face component. Uh, our buildings remain closed to students and families, although we do realize that you have some items in the school that you may need to retrieve. We are currently working on a plan in the coming weeks to allow some limited access, and that information will be forthcoming, but that is not, uh, not currently uh, an option. So we're limited, there's no doubt. We're limited with uh, some technology pieces, we're limited with some access issues, but that, those should not be barriers that prevent us from at least trying. And the, the term that I'm using with our staff is we're just asking that everyone, all parties involved, put forward a good faith effort. Our teachers are gonna do the best they can to provide a legitimate and rigorous academic environment for your children. We're asking for your support in motivating your children to uh, participate and be a part of that. We're asking that if you have questions that you ask them of us directly because we're, we think that this is really important. And we know many of you have reached out in the previous weeks, and although we've provided a lot of support and materials for you, uh, it's not enough. Many of you want more, and that's what this plan is designed to do, is to give you more access, to give a better opportunity for your children to uh, access those standards um, in, a, in a truly meaningful way. So. Uh, for, for example, we have uh, continued to provide food service to our families in, in the entirety of this, this time we've been off. We've served over 30,000 meals to our community. That's going to continue. So we've already developed mechanisms in the very short term to get materials and get things to families. We've handed out work packets to thousands of families, right? We've provided a lot of meaningful resources on our district webpage. All we're asking is that you try. We're asking that as a family. And we're asking that of your children that in these very unique times uh, you do the best you can given uh, what resources your family has at your disposal. We recognize that we may have a shortage of computers and homes or limited internet access. We get it. We get it. We're willing to make the appropriate accommodations. If we need to make a hard copy of materials for you, we're going to figure out a way to do it. Mail it to your home. Um, Call the teacher, email the teacher. That's always the, the first step in figuring out any of these barriers. Special education students, at-risk students, students who are behind in credits, uh, who are part of uh, credit recovery programs, our homeschool students. We have a variety of students, dual enrollment questions, advanced placement students. We are trying to provide accommodations for every young person, no matter where they're at on that spectrum. And so I'm not going to sit here and go through every single accommodation. I'm not going to identify every um, adjusted plan that we might be able to provide. But I guarantee you the building where your child attends will have answers to those questions. And I, I'm going to say with, with a small caveat, it might not, we may not have all the answers on day one. right? Good faith effort and good faith implies what? It implies that we're all having a little bit of faith in this partnership. And we have proven in this community that despite difficult circumstances, we can get through pretty much anything. And I don't think this is going to be any different than that. I uh, heard a great quote today 
that was shared to me by one of our principals, and it goes like this. In these unprecedented times, we can either go through it or we can grow through it, right? I know we'll choose the latter. I know that we will grow through this and become better. At the end of the day, I shared with our teachers earlier in the message that I sent to them that this is another tool we can add to our toolbox, right? The fact that in the short term, in less than a few weeks, we can put together an online instructional plan for 5,000 students, that's a huge benefit for our district moving forward because we've added another way to connect with kids uh, and families. And that's, that's what's most important to us is maintaining that connection. So, um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna finish with this. We know there are tons of questions about some really important events. Um, our senior parents, our senior students, when you talk about things like, you know, finalizing their transcripts for college applications. We can talk about prom and graduation and swing up and all night party and all these really important events that these kids have been looking forward to for many years. We've got juniors who didn't take the SAT test this year, right? Uh, that's a big part of the college application process. We've got to figure out what that looks like for them. We are coming up with answers to all those questions, but also understand that we're very limited based on what the governor has issued in previous executive orders as it relates to the number of folks we can gather um, in particular areas. So we are kind of at the mercy of some of those executive orders and directions that we're getting from the state. As soon as we have answers to those questions, we're gonna get them out to you as quickly as possible. We know folks have questions like, you know, locker access, and getting into the building and getting a hold of my equipment and a band instrument or books in my kid's locker, things like that. We are working through a plan right now to get you answers to those questions. But in the short term, our focus needs to be, as a community, on getting our kids connected to their teachers and getting the online learning program up and running. That's our number one focus. That's our number one job. That's our primary mission as an educational institution is to educate, teach, and learn. And that's what we want to focus on right now. But we also are keeping an eye on the many things that are important to you folks that you want answers on. So we are working through those, um, those problems right now we will have answers to those questions. The last thing I wanted to point you to is continue to utilize the district website. And just wanted to share with you, if you haven't seen this, this is the homepage of our district. Um, and as you can tell, we've identified many resources that you can just click on and get access to. We have a frequently asked questions document that's, con that's updated almost daily as things change. Continue to use this as a, a primary resource. Uh, we'll continue to use School Messenger, Facebook, Twitter and the district website to get information to you um, as quickly as we can when we have answers to questions. But like I said earlier, the first line of defense, so to speak, or the first step in the process is always with your child's teacher or building administration. Um, they can speak specifically to what's happening in their building to get you the best answers that you're going to need. So uh, I'm just asking to um, for your support and getting your kids motivated to participate as as, as much as they can, given any limitations you may have as a family. Good faith effort. That is the phrase I want to really cover uh, this entire relationship moving forward. You're going to try, we're going to try, and we're going to have a lot of patience, and we're going to have a lot of understanding if there are limitations and barriers that prevent, uh, prevent access. We want to help you get over those, uh, those barriers in, in, a, in a legitimate way. So your son or daughter or your children have access to the education that they desperately, desperately deserve to get. So thanks very much. Lots more to come. Uh, there's going to be plenty of communication moving forward. This is not the last time you'll hear from us. Uh, really appreciate everyone's patience. And uh, so far, it's really been a great interaction. We've got great feedback from you, and we appreciate that. So thanks. Stay safe and healthy.